this episode of Glocktober is brought to you by FBC. No, not really, but I just wanted to show that I got my membership. And now I can officially have my pistol braces that I can't confirm and deny all of before until the injunction is um, basically null and void because of the final ruling or because of another ruling, but it probably won't be another ruling because this, is, this injunction's pretty semi-permanent. Anyways, that's another topic for another video. Let's talk about pistols and pistol braces today. Uh, by the way, I've been a member. Um, I just, I've just kept this. So, I'm just officially adding to my wallet now. But, today's topic is actually going to be a semi-unboxing. So, uh, let's talk about this bad boy. So, this is one of my favorite outside the waistband holsters. A different demonstration video on that, but this is the Safari, Safari Land ALS, and this is the Blackhawk Omnivore holster. It uh, has the level one, or actually level two retention, it locks onto the light. So, any um, firearm that holds this TLR1, or I believe they have another one, but uh, locks onto the light. And I have the adapter plate on here as well for the uh, Safari Land ALS SLS ALS. But basically, it just depresses when you go to reach it, you push it down, and it unlocks like that. But this isn't actually about this light. It's about a, another light. So let me take this off. And so what happened on my other light is basically I was just turning it to infinity. So the screw uh, got stripped out. So I bought some replacement parts. And I figured... Since I have, I'm gonna just buy another TLR1 light and this strip was, uh, this screw was stripped. I always wanted to make a rifle light out of one of these because these are very reliable, very durable. And the rifle lights, the price is more. And since I already have one, it'd be cheaper to just convert this into a rifle light. Uh, whereas the rifle light itself is about 200 bucks. And this is uh, already has a really nice throw, has the same features that I always already like. And I can just add a tape switch, but I'll show you that in the video. Uh, that I'm about to make. <clears throat> so these are some of the old parts. I'm gonna do the show the new parts in a little bit. Um, but basically, I got the little part, the little hook and pin in there. You can see I'm not using those right now. But I took the door off the back door. Uh, this part right here. I just popped the pin out, and it came out. I had to replace the door, and I'll show you what the new door looks like. But this is basically what happened to the screw that's under the spring tension in there. It got stripped away pretty good. You can see that. Um, I'm not going to take this one out and compare it, but uh, you can see anybody who knows anything about threads, that's no bueno right there. You can see it's showing the silver, and it's not really supposed to. And um, yeah, so get that to the side so I just replaced it all I got a new door um, because I didn't know whether it was the doors threads or the these threads or both so I'm gonna try the uh, the new screw but I can tell these threads are a little damaged I wish I had a knew the thread pitch so I could rethread it myself but that being said just put that to the side and uh yeah this is going to be our reference point for now Goes to the side um <laughs> quick story this is like one of the best uh packaging bags that i've got it has like this zipper that doesn't like go down it's pretty cool and it's easy to you know unlock and unlock quick fun fact zippers actually have a lock and unlock function i don't know if you guys ever knew that but the patent for the zipper has a lock and unlock all right i'm getting pretty nerdy but anyways i got this big old thing just for this small little <laughs> 1911 ejector 
So I was like, oh, I gotta use this thing. I don't know what I'm using for, but I'm using for something. And uh, yeah, so I figured I'll use it for this. So this is what I've got so far. The light was already uh, covered like this, but uh, you can see um, I still have the uh, screw in there uh, for the uh, the adapter for the rail. But I've already changed out the uh, the back door, the door plate. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but loosen that up. Get these new parts out. So these screws, I have no idea what they go to but they came with the rifle upgrade kit um they came with these so i'm not sure if you're supposed to screw those into here or screw it into the rails i have no idea but i probably won't be using it i'm not i'm not using these either so these go like that um but the thing is these only go on the sticker so they only go on this so these this actually fits in that little groove that they have right there i thought this was for like rails that's why i got it like that otherwise i could have saved a few bucks but i'm probably not going to do it like that i'm just going to go straight tape switch why not when you got the the adhesive just stick it right there maybe that's for heat management possibly maybe but i don't see this having any electronics it's really just a uh but so i don't know Maybe there's uh, another reason. Maybe somebody can leave it in the comments down below. But I have no idea. So I'm not going to use these. I got them for no reason. But I definitely wanted this because this bungee, uh, I play with my setups a lot. So I'm going to end up plugging this in on the back uh, and taping it wherever. I'm going to show you, uh, make a separate video on how I'm going to have it set up. Because I'm probably going to put it on my AK. And then I have to uh, make a final video on my AK. Uh, I got two more parts that I need that I'm waiting for. Uh, so I'm going to make that video. But I'll still show this function and everything at the end of the video. But we're going to put that to the side. Because I'm not going to be doing anything with that right now. But what I did was I took off this bay door <clears throat> right here. And I basically popped that pin out pop this new one in pop the new door in and i uh, i didn't like how much play it had so you can see i, I super glued it a little bit <laughs> so that the pin didn't move um it can still move a little bit not a lot though um i basically eliminated all of that play that it had in there because i felt like it was going to fall out and i didn't like that so uh, but it does still maintain the ability to be used as a regular flashlight which is what i like about these um you can still use them as a normal flashlight you can still boom and then if you want to strobe just tap it twice um and then you can still lock it into place so i can still do that with this new uh rifle i guess you could call it a head tape but i forgot what it's called i'll put it on the screen here but it still works like normal you can still lock it in place and then momentary is still the same still got the strobe still holds the same features that i'm used to um but the i just needed a new uh basically door and screw so we'll put the old one to the side put the screws to the side because they're useless and then um this is the new door and screw and this is the thing to put the pin in and then i actually have a different screw that i'm going to try out so let's open these real quick side note i think i got both of these from flashlight depot i think flashlight depot supplies um optics planet with one of them and so that's the one that i got um, but yeah this is my my first attempt at a, a real unboxing for something that's relevant to the topic that i'm talking about glocks glocks over this is uh me upgrading my glock light to a rifle light so okay um granted i didn't use uh do any instructions or anything like that so we're just gonna basically wing it oh and i don't understand why this comes on there the cover um but side note it fits in here it'll probably get lost uh because i can see that falling out very quickly very very quickly um with just regular regular motion if you're still using this um but i guess if you're using just a switch it'll probably stay in place maybe i don't know doesn't seem like that tight of a fit so i guess only time will tell but anyways let's see First, I'm gonna use the screw that I'm not using. And I'm gonna just test to see if the threads on the old door are still good. Even though I have a new one, I wanna see if the threads on this are still good. So this is the one I'm not using. 
uh, compared to the one that I got that I thought was better, but it's actually not. So let's see. Uh, let me do a comparison of those so you can see them up close. See if it was the threads. Was it the threads? Let's us see. Let's us see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think it was because it is not threading in there. It's not threading in there. Actually, it is a little. Oh man, yeah. Yep. Those threads are toast, I think. Yeah, see, it's already starting to. See if maybe I cleaned them out, maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's only threading as far as I'm going in there. Side note, it came with some zip ties for the tape switch. Forgot to mention that, but let's see if we clean out these threads. I don't think this will work, but we'll try it anyway. Clean out the threads. It's not even like, when I go to thread it in, it's like grabbing a chip a little bit. So it's like, it's not. it doesn't even want to thread at all. So. You can see that thing is dirty. Oh, yeah. Let's try it again. Uh, also, just compare these. They look like they're the same thread pitch. They're the same size. Same size diameter. So, let's see. Fill the thread on further than where we already threaded it, and the answer is no. I'm not even going to try to thread that. It'll damage the threads. You can see it's already stripping the threads a little bit. That's why I buy expendable parts. Because it is stripping that thread. Alright. This is why we bought a door that we know will fit. And a door, a door that we know we can use. With the, and we don't want to use the little T-clip thing. So we're going to keep that very handy and very close. We have a tool that actually can put that on too. I got the flat ear one so you can see this one is the regular I, mean, I got the flat one just so that it, it doesn't really matter I don't think um, just makes it a little bit of less pain in my ass when I have to <laughs> unscrew this thing so let's try to thread on the new one even though I knew it would work flawlessly yeah it's it's not taking any effort to thread this on so I know this is gonna work it's gonna thread on no problem all right so from what i understand you gotta use the spring put that in there like that use this for a reference tool so the spring goes behind there boom you thread it in like oh you gotta put the door in too put the door in oh no it threads from the other side okay got it got it got it, got it. so boom that so that gives it the tension yeah yeah, yeah yeah and then I gotta put the clip on there but that's the question how the heck do I put that clip on there so we're gonna start to thread it um, get my fix it sticks I need to get my, my Torx bit off there I don't need the Torx bit for this yet another opportunity for the fits fix it sticks to come in I just needed to grab it there we go okay so we're gonna grab that does it need another spring I don't believe so does it no so we're gonna thread that in there see it's locking already uh, I'm glad to see that I might use my let me use get my ratcheting uh, screwdriver real quick okay this one's doing much better let's see oh which one uh, 
これね。Season these threads just a little bit more, so that just means taking it off a little bit and putting it back on. We're gonna put bad parts on one side, good parts on the other. Protect the T clips with that. All right, so let's just unthread this, and we're gonna. Yeah, this is a little stiff. A little stiff. Why is this so stiff? I might have to. Shave that down a little bit so it can move freely because it's supposed to move freely. Let's see. Let's test the old door fit. Yeah, it's definitely supposed to be a little bit further in there. Is the diameter slightly different? Looks like it is. It looks like it's like a little bit too long. So we're actually gonna shave this down just a little bit so it can move a little freer because what happens, this has to move freely in there. And uh, I don't know why it's not. I don't have any, uh, maybe that's it. I'm gonna take this off. See, if maybe I cut a little bit of this material off, maybe that's what's doing it. I don't think it is though, but we'll see. It's here to see until we just can get that normal fit yeah because it's not really fitting in there so we're gonna do a little work and we'll be right back okay we got it on um we got it seasoned and fitting everything like that uh, i even put the uh sticker on there so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in there thread it in and then we're gonna put that c-clamp thing in there i think i know how to do it I think you just put it in like this. Um, I think. I'm not sure. We're, we're gonna find out real soon how to do this. So, basically, boom, put that on there, right there. And the reason I put this on there, uh, dual purpose. One is to mitigate heat, because when you're using this a lot, it can get pretty hot. As you can see from the uh, caution hot right there. The other side same thing these can get pretty hot if you're using them for a decent amount of time um, so it mitigates the heat a little bit in addition to a non-reflective surface I knew that this was gonna be a matter black and I know this doesn't really reflect uh, but I wanted the main body of it to not be a reflective surface per se so if that makes sense cool if not it doesn't matter because it doesn't have nothing to do with you alrighty I actually might change out this spring Cause it looks like it's getting bound up a little bit. Um, maybe I use the smaller one because it looks like they use the smaller one as well. And I don't need uh, extra spring tension or nothing like that. So let me see if I can find my old. There it is. So we're gonna use the original spring, which I should have used this anyway. I don't need any extra spring tension on the screw itself. So I pop that in there. In and then we are going to try attempt to put this freaking C clamp thing on there. So I don't know how the heck. I don't know. I'm just gonna try to do it by hand and see if that works. You have two. I already lost one of the C clamps. In there, 
the other C clamp is vamoose, but we got it in there, so let's see if it works. So let's just try to unthread this. desired effect and thus I have a new I've converted my Glock light my Glock TLR1 to a rifle TLR1 I was thinking about it when I was uh, trying to replace it um, this does help me actually in a pinch actually try to grab those ears uh, they do get worn down pretty easily like this one but you can see um, they do help especially if it's like not super duper tight like this one is let's loosen it up a little bit and you don't have no, no other surface to grab onto you can just reach and untighten those like that but it does serve as function still works as a normal flashlight um, but I just wanted that bungee. That bungee to me is is legit. And it's just the reason why I bought it. I seen a picture of, I don't remember what setup it was, but I bought it and I was like, yeah, I gotta have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta have it. So boom, you can see it, it works fine. You can see momentary, or you can just lock it and it will still work as a normal light. And let's say your tape switch dies or becomes worn down or whatever. These are like a 10 buck replacement, whatever. Might be more. I think these was like 20, 20 bucks. But anyways, less than buying a new light. So you can see, take it out, still work. And then if you still want to do the momentary, the strobing, still can. If you double tap, it'll still, you know, basically same function, just a different fashion. But let me know what you guys think about me upgrading my Glock light. I'm trying to keep it Glock themed. I got some more Glock stories to tell in Glocktober. I can say Glock as many times as I want because it's not the other word. Now shut up and yeah, peace.